What is up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the Numbers. This is my full card breakdown and prediction video for Dana White's Contender Series week number seven. We are getting right back into it here. And yeah, I'm actually liking this card. I think there's a lot of live underdogs for this card. I'm picking a couple dogs for sure. I think we're going to get some violence as well on a Tuesday night. So yeah, looking forward to breaking it all down. Before we do, so if you guys could do me a couple favors, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Leave me a comment down below. The comments help. I uh, love interacting with you guys. Uh, this video is brought to you by Price Picks. Right now, if you guys sign up on Price Picks using code DFSBTN, you'll get $50 instantly when you place your first $5 lineup. So yeah, free 50 bucks pretty much. Just you know, use the code DFSBTN. Uh, place a $5 lineup, and then you will get $50 instantly into your prize picks account. So check that out. And yeah, looking forward to this card. As always, five frights to break down. Uh, I do want to apologize if I do look a little bit sweaty. Um, just got done having some some hardcore uh, sex um, with, with a woman, of course. Um, but anyway... Let's talk some fights here. All right. Uh, we're going to kick it off with the first fight of the night. We got Rose Conceição going against Alexa uh, Fenara. We will start with Conceição. Uh, Conceição, she is training out of the Pitbull Brothers. She's 27 years old, 5'5", five five with a 65-inch reach. 7-0 uh, and 5-0 and and oh in her last five fights. No notable wins or losses for Rose. Uh, she has a 42% finish rate, 14% by knockout, and 28% by submission for a 42% finish rate overall. Some notes I have here on Rose. Uh, solid kicks and movement. Sneaky head kick that she'll land as well. Good counters when her opponents come forward. Does a little bit too much backing up for my liking. I would like to see her be a little bit more aggressive in there. Um, I did see her five-round fight. And her best round was actually the fifth round, but prior to that, it was a really lackluster fight. The fight pretty much took place on the feet the entire time. And yeah, the rounds were close. She got taken down here and there, but you know she really didn't have any success with the wrestling in her own right. But yeah, the fifth round, she looked really good because she was actually coming forward and, and trying to get her opponent out of there. She's very strong in the clinch, just very strong in general, but I have seen her taking it down multiple times. Does look a little bit iffy off of her back, and if she gets taken down in this matchup, it certainly could be a problem. She'll go for takedowns and she'll get some, but she can also make some mistakes and end up on bottom. Uh, the ground game looks to be pretty good while on top, has solid control. Uh, she's active with the ground and pound, which I like. She uses her strength and physicality to get fighters down to the mat. I've seen her pick, uh, you know, girls up and just slam them down to the ground and she seems to be able to um, kind of get the fight down to the mat if she does want to for the most part you know there was one fight where she was not really able to to get her opponent down but typically she's able to get these ladies down and that's pretty much all of her fights I think she's solid everywhere but I was mostly impressed with her ground game when she does get on top um, of her opponents as far as Alexia Thyanara she is training out of Rebus Family Gym. She's 26 years old, 5'4", with a 62.5-inch reach. She's 10-1 and 4-1 and and in her last five fights. Notable wins or losses for Thyanara. She has a submission win against UFC fighter Ryan Amanda back in 2021, not too long ago, and also has a submission loss to Bruna Brazil, who's also in the UFC, and that was back in 2019. Uh, Thyanara has a 70% finish rate, 10% comes by knockout, 60% comes by submission for a 70% finish rate overall. Some notes I have on Thyanara. Um, she has fought some pretty solid competition, like I mentioned. Rayon Amanda, I think Amanda's 0-2 in the UFC, but you know both of her fights were extremely close. She could have got the nod in both of them. And then Bruna Brazil is just looking like an absolute killer. She's going to be the more experienced fighter in this matchup. She's very wild and looping um, on the feet, just really looping, striking. Uh, definitely going to be at a striking disadvantage here and really in a lot of her matchups. Lots of swinging and missing, lots of hitting air, uh, but she does throw hard at least with you know, not a care in the world. Uh, she is competent in the striking, I'd say, but you know she's going to definitely be at a striking disadvantage here for sure. She will threaten with submissions off of her back when her opponents um, are on top. She'll also threaten in on submissions when her opponents go for takedowns. That's pretty much her game. She looks to be pretty legit on the ground. She can absolutely be taken down. The takes and defense is not great, but I think a lot of that has to do with her just being very comfortable off her back. And oftentimes she'll get taken down. She'll sweep, reverse, end up getting on top or you know getting to the, her opponent's back and then choking them out. Surely 
play after. The grappling looks to be pretty solid. That's her game. Uh, she's finished six of her wins by submission. She's very dangerous once the fight is on the mat. And like I said, she's really good at getting to her opponent's back. And once she does get to the back, she's good at, you know, choking him out. And that's what she kind of did to Rayon Amanda. Amanda actually took her down. She was able to reverse her, get to the back, and she choked her out there shortly after. So I think the ground game of Thyanara is is absolutely legit and this is borderline kind of a, a striking striker versus grappler matchup with that said though i think rose can can certainly get some takedowns here i think it's a very interesting fight i lean ever so slightly with rose in this one um, rose is going to be the better striker in this matchup for sure i think she's going to be able to dictate where this fight takes place i think it'd be wise for her to keep this fight standing i think if she does that for 15 minutes she should do the better work um and win a decision here but i could also see her getting the fight down to the ground if she she wants to and just winning some minutes on top just you know minding her p's and q's staying on top but thynar's ground game is no joke if this fight hits the mat and it could get sweaty for sure but i'm gonna take rose here i'm gonna take her to win this fight by decision but yeah if this fight hits the mat thynar is you know pretty good down there but i'll take rose by decision in this one Moving on to the next fight we have kevin vallejos going against cam t we will start with Kevin Vallejos here. He's training out of Brothers of Life MMA. He's 22 years old, 5'7", with a 68-inch reach, 13-1, and one, and 4-1 and one in his last five fights. Notable wins or losses for Vallejos. He beat former UFC fighter Eduardo Garagori by second-round knockout, and then he also lost to Gene Silva last year on Dana White's Contender Series by a decision. We'll talk much more about that fight. Vallejos is a really good finisher, 84% finish rate, 69% of those come by knockout, 15% of his wins come by submission. So notes I have on Vallejos, he's very active with the leg kicks, throws hard, um, just in general, kicks to the body are very hard as well. He can be a little bit low volume at times in there. We kind of saw that in the Gene Silva fight down the stretch, but um, I'm not really a fan of how little he does throw, but when he does you know, throw and when he does let his hands go and when he's aggressive, he looks very good doing so. Um, you know, he has a ton of power just in general. He was able to put Garagori out and, and finish him in the second round, and that's not a, a bad win at all. Um, still very young. He's only, what, 22 years old at this point. He was 21 years old when he fought Gene Silva, and he had some moments against Gene Silva. Uh, he won the first round against Gene Silva, who we know Gene Silva is just absolutely on fire, looking good. And since that Gene Silva loss, Vallejos is 2-0 and since then with a submission win and a knockout win as well. Vallejos will go for some takedowns to get the fight down to the mat at times. The ground and pound does look pretty good once he's on top, but you know he's mostly looking to to strike here. I've seen him take some guys down and just kind of let him back up. I think he wants the, the fight on the feet for the most part, but he can mix in takedowns here or there. I think the record is a, a bit deceiving for sure. Uh, you know, 13 wins, one law. I mean, a lot of these wins they are against you know very 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 low level competition, but. You know, uh, he's still young, he's improving, and I think we are going to see probably the best version, a leveled up version of Vallejos, which is scary because, like I said, he looked good in the, the Gene Silva fight. As far as Cam Teague, he's training out of Port City Combat Sports. He is 26 years old, 6 foot, with a 69-inch reach, 7-0, 5-0 in his last five fights. Notable wins or losses, he knocked out uh, former UFC fighter Austin Lingo in his last fight, which was August of this year. Uh, Teak has an 86% finish rate, 56% of those by knockout, and 28% of those wins come by submission, kind of an equal opportunity finisher. So like I said, he has a nice knockout win against Austin Lingo. Uh, Lingo's a very tough dude, so that's impressive to me. Like Lingo's been to decision against some very you know solid fighters in the UFC, so knocking him out, you know, that, that, was, that was impressive, kind of broke him in that matchup. So Teague is um, very hittable in there and doesn't really move his head at all that much, and he looks like a very tough, he's one of those tough guys that kind of will eat one to give one type dudes um, he was literally eating punches with his face in the lingo fight and he kind of looked like a step or two behind in that matchup early on but lingo kind of slowed down kind of gassed out a little bit and cheek broke him i think in the, in the second round but yeah early on he was getting pieced up by austin lingo Teague has some solid leg kicks and some solid hands in general, but he is definitely an eat one, you know, give one type fighter who's going to literally block punches with his face, and he's a tough dude. He has a, a brick for 
were ahead, but geez, this guy's getting hit a lot. The toughness and the relentlessness of Teague is impressive. I think that's his best attribute, just tough. He's, he's going to be there the entire time. He's going to be coming forward the entire time as well. He uses his toughness and his chin to his advantage, and he's going to try to out-tough you in there, and he's going to try to break you, and that's just what he did to Austin Lingo. I'm not sure the strategy of eating punches with his face is going to pay off against you know higher-level guys, especially here in this matchup, but he looks solid, though. I was impressed for sure, but this is going to be a tough matchup against Kevin Vallejos. Some final thoughts on this fight. Vallejos gave Gene Silva a tougher test than Drew Dober and Charles Jordan. I mean, think about that. I mean, Gene Silva walked through both Drew Dober and Charles Jordan, made it look easy, whereas with Vallejos, Vallejos gave Gene Silva a fight. That's something to absolutely mention. Um, he had some serious moments against uh, Gene Silva early on, and although Teague is a tough dude, I'm not sure he's going to pose many problems here for Vallejos. I don't think Vallejos is going to slow down and break like Austin Lingo did. Vallejos, at 22 years old, looks UFC ready in my opinion if, if that's the case this is really a guy that he should go out there and beat so I'm taking Vallejos to win this fight I think it's going to be by decision and I think it's going to be a fun war here so give me Kevin Vallejos fight by decision by the way the odds on this one we have Vallejos minus 430 Cam Teague plus 330 in this one uh, Kevin Vallejos the second biggest favorite on the card Moving on to this next fight. Uh, this fight is uh, a very interesting one. Kevin Christian going against Francesco Mazio. We'll start with Christian here. He's training out a Cosme Jr. team. He's 29 years old, six foot seven with an 80 inch reach, eight and two, and five and zero in his last five fights. No notable wins or losses for Christian. Um, he has a 100% finish rate. 43% of those come by knockout. 50 or 56% of those come by submission. So equal opportunity finisher is Christian, I suppose. Some notes I have on Christian. He's going to be absolutely massive. Uh, and he's going to be the much bigger fighter and much longer fighter in this matchup. And it's not often at all we see somebody who's six foot seven at light heavyweight. You know, typically... Uh, we just don't see six foot seven in, in general. I know De Spain is like six seven. Uh, we just saw a contender series guy last week. He was like six seven, six eight. But uh, we just don't typically see a six foot seven at two oh five. Is kind of wild to me. And, and and you watch his fights. It's like he looks very very thin in there, very skinny in there. Um, it's kind of like like a Slenderman type type build, right? There isn't much footage on him at all, and he's fought a very questionable level of competition. But he looks to start very quickly, and he's extremely aggressive. His arms are are very long, and he has power in those hands. He looks to just go in there and swing with reckless abandon, hoping to land on his opponents. Um, does a lot of blitzing forward, blitzing in general with his punches. He doesn't mind just standing there and, and banging, which is fun to watch. And he doesn't care about getting hit at all. Um, I saw him actually get dropped hard in, in one of his fights. He was able to recover and win that fight, but he was dropped nonetheless. And there can also be like moments of just a lot of inactivity from him. His cardio doesn't look the best, but he is dangerous on the feet. But again, it's, it's against lower level guys. Uh, he can get some takedowns, I guess, but I haven't really seen much of his ground game. I will mention he does have five submission wins, but I was not able to find footage on any of those five submission wins but apparently the guy can grapple if he's going out there and subbing guys five times for me i mean it doesn't look like anything special other than the guy's six foot seven at eight, you know with an 80 inch reach at light heavyweight that's that's pretty special has some power to go along with it but other than that i wasn't you know too you know thrilled about kevin christian as far as francesco Mazio, he's training out of MMA Fight Academy. He's 27 years old, 6'2", with a 75-inch reach, 4-0, and 4-0 and in his only four fights. Notable wins or losses, none for Mazio as well. Again, you know, not the best competition. He does have a 75% finish rate, um, 3 by knockout, and then he does have a, a DQ win. So for Mazio, he's going to be at a big size disadvantage here in this fight. Obviously, the level of competition's pretty abysmal. Like it's it's probably worse than, than Christians, which is which is saying a lot. Both these guys have just fought nobody. So he's been out of the first round once in three and three of his four wins have came in actually the first minute of the fight. So he throws some some kicks in there. He's looking to take off his opponent's head. He swings very wild, very aggressive, very, very aggressive. He's also down to stand and bang with his opponents. He has a lot of power in his hands for sure. Like, this guy does hit hard. I will say that. He has a win via DQ, and he also has a win via injury, TKO, where his opponent landed very awkwardly on his arm. It was kind of brutal to watch. In his fight that did reach the second round, he looked exhausted. Uh, he looked awful. He had nothing left. He, he's not built for, for three rounds at all. Um, he was done. He was absolutely done in that fight. He had nothing left. 
looked like he was about to get finished via exhaustion, to be honest. Uh, but his opponent eventually kneed him in the head while he was grounded, and he ended up getting a win. So, um, yeah, not good. Not good. If this fight hits the second round, Mazio is is completely toast. Um, this is a mess of a fight, man. I mean, this is just one big... Big giant mess to me. I have no clue who's going to win this. All I know is somebody's getting served here. I, I'm i not sure what the over, under, I mean, it's, it's set at one and a half, I'd imagine, but I'm, I'm sure the under is probably juiced um, because I, I just don't see this fight lasting too long. I find it hard to believe either of these guys are having any success in the UFC, but since I have to pick a winner here, I'm going to go with Mazio. It's it's greasy, it's it's terrible, but you know, I think his striking actually looked halfway decent. I was impressed with the striking, I was impressed with the power, he's going to sit down on his punches, and Christian is just begging to be knocked out. Um, so, if this fight hits the second round, I think both guys are kind of, you know, toast, but especially Mazio. But I'm going to say Mazio takes Christian's head off in the first round, but I, yeah, I think somebody's getting served here, and I'm just not excited about either of these guys. I'm excited about the fight, though, like the fight, it should be hilarious, it should be fun, I think somebody's getting knocked out. But give me Mazio here in this fight. Um, kind of expected Mazio to be a, a bigger dog. You know, I thought people might look at the the six foot seven at light heavyweight, but you know this line's coming in quite a bit. This is I, I would not bet on this fight personally outside of like an under. But yeah, I'm taking Mazio first round KO. He's, he's plus one ten on the money line. I'm moving on to the next fight, we have Vadim Kutsi going against Daniel Frunza. We will start with Kutsi here. He's training out of Academy MMA. He's 33 years old, 6 foot, uh, 17 and 1, and 5 and 0 in his last five fights. Notable wins or losses. He does have a, a pretty good win here. He knocked out Ismail Nardiev in 2022 in the first round. He was a big underdog in that matchup. 72% uh, finish rate for Kutsi, 28% come by knockout, 41% come by submission. So yeah, uh, so a, a couple big things here with this matchup in general. So Kutsi, he has not fought in the last two years, and that's kind of a red flag for me with him being in his 30s. You know, if if a guy's like in his like 20s, you know, take some time off to improve and all that. But he's he's in his 30s, and he took he's taken two years off. I don't know if it's an injury or what, but he hasn't fought in a while. His record looks very impressive at 17 and one. But that record is just very, very padded. Outside of Ismail Nardiev, the level of competition has not been the the most impressive at all. And it's also important to mention that he has taken this fight on short notice. He's stepping in for Matt Dixon. Matt Dixon was supposed to fight Daniel Frunza. So short notice, hasn't fought in two years. Those are some big things to mention here for the, the big favorite in Kutsi. But yeah, um, in terms of you know what I've seen from the guy, he has fast, sharp hands, has some power in those hands as well. He's a very technical striker, has hard leg kicks, and he really attacks his opponent's legs. And I've seen him actually hurt his opponents with, with leg kicks in there. He is patient at times and can be a little bit low volume, but he has a really good striker nonetheless. I liked what I saw from the striking of Kutsi. In terms of the grappling, good good solid grappler. Will go for takedowns and his grappling looks good. Very slick on the mat. He's positioned over submission, which I like. I saw him get to the back of one of, of, of one of his opponents and instantly tap him out. Um, his control is very good as well. Good back take. Yeah, I mean, the, the guy's pretty, pretty solid on the ground as well. But the, the big thing here is I did not like what I saw from his cardio. And he looks extremely tired as the fight goes on. The mouth's wide open. I was watching one of his fights, and he had, like, his hands on his hips. Um, and it was, like, the second round. His hands on the hips, looking up at the clock. Like, I hate that. Um, so the cardio for me is a big question. Remind you, he's coming in here on short notice. Um, so, the, yeah, the cardio is kind of the one thing for me. Because every, everything other than that, it looked solid. At one point in, the, in one of the fights I was watching, he's actually running away from his opponent just because he was so exhausted, and just standing there, just exhausted, running away from the guy, just didn't want to fight because he was so tired. Like, I don't like that. And and, and like I said, he, he beat Ismail Nardiev. That's a phenomenal win. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Nardiev. Nardiev fought in the UFC a while back. I think Nardiev's pretty good. That's a great win, but I'm just not sure how legit Kutsi is. So as far as Daniel Franza, he's training out of UTC. Uh, 30 years old, six foot one, eight and two, four and one in his last five fights. Nobody too notable for Franza, but he has fought some like solid regional scene guys like Gary Bellotto Jr., Jalen Fuller. He hasn't fought complete bombs. Uh, Franza has an 88% finish rate. All those come by knockout. 
So some notes I have on Franza, he has good pressure, he's active with the kicks, he can be a little bit low volume in there as the fight goes on, he seems to kind of kind of get going with the volume, uh, you know, doing more and more, which is good. The pressure is constant throughout the fight, though, like as soon as the fight starts, he's going to pressure, I like that, and like I said, he seems to get just more involved in the fight, more and more aggressive as the fight goes on. I saw him get a knockout win with about one second left, so the cardio, it definitely checks out, um, he's very dangerous as the fight goes on, he's very dangerous late uh yeah he literally got the knockout i think with like one second left the ref stopped the fight he has some really solid power in his hands and he does his best work when he's when he's being aggressive when he's coming forward and letting those hands go he can be taken down and held against the cage as well i've seen him lose a lot of minutes against the cage and the submission defense could be an issue as well as he's been submitted in both of his losses so interesting fight to call here so the, the takedown defense and submission defense of frunza I don't like it all. It's a big red flag for me. But other than that, I was impressed with what I saw. I think he's going to absolutely have the cardio advantage here for sure. And I trust him more and more as the fight goes on. Kuti's coming in here on a, on a pretty big layoff, about two years, coming in here on short notice. And I was not a fan of the cardio at all. I think he can probably get takedowns here. But as the fight goes on, it's kind of hard for me to trust him. Uh, maybe Kuti can get an early submission. I think that might be you know, on the table, maybe an early finish in general, but if this fight gets to the second round, third round, I think uh, Frunza can Frunza can kind of weather an early storm here and take over more and more as the fight goes on, especially with the short notice here of uh, Kutsu. So I'm going to take Frunza here to win this fight. I'm going to take him to win this fight by third round knockout, and he's a pretty big underdog here at plus 185. So yeah, uh, Kutsu, his record looks phenomenal, 17-1, and one, but I think it's very padded, and I think under the, the circumstances, the short notice, all that, I think we got a live dog here on Daniel Franza. All right, moving on to the main event. We have Bailey Schoenfelder going against Danilo Vola 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 what the Voiv Voik Vodka Mr. Vodka Vodka Vola Vola Vodka Vola Vola Voya Vodka Voya Vodka Danilo, who you know, who who cares? Who who cares what what his name is? He's gonna he's gonna lose. Uh, we'll start with Schoenfelder. Schoenfelder, he's training out of Sanford MMA. He's 27 years old, six foot three, with a 76 inch reach. Five and zero, and and five and zero in his only five fights. Uh, no wins or losses. since he knocked out Greg Velasco to win the CFFC championship. That was April of this year. Greg Velasco fought on the Contender Series last year. He lost, but he fought on the Contender Series nonetheless. Schoenfelder, a 100% finish rate, 80% by sub, 20% by submission. Some notes I have on Schoenfelder. He starts pressuring early. He's calm. He's defensively sound. He can swing a little bit wild, but he does swing with power. He can get a little bit reckless in there and careless as the fight goes on, but he has an insane chin on him. He'll eat a shot. Um, never really seen him hurt. The chin looks to be to be pretty good. He really sits down on his punches. Ultimately, he is looking to get the fight down to the mat, and that's where he's best at. He has a wrestling background. He was a state champion as a high school senior. He's very physically strong. I've seen him toss guys to the ground like it's nothing, just ragdolling them. Looks to have pretty solid ground game once he does get on top. His control on top is pretty good. He's active at the ground and pound. He looks to advance position, which is good. Uh, he'll look to get into either mount. He'll also look for the crucifix position and pound out his opponent and he's, he's deadly on top you know you don't want this guy on top of you the cardio is pretty good and his wrestling is as well he doesn't look to be slowing down as the fight goes on and we don't really see much of this at heavyweight but he's one of these guys Schoenfelder who actually will use his cardio pace as a weapon in his fights so he'll, he'll kind of drag you into deep waters and get you out of there as the fight goes on as far as Danilo um, he's 24 years old, six foot four, with a 78 inch reach, six and zero, five and zero in his last five fights. Notable win, no notable wins or losses for Danilo. He has a 100% finish rate as well, 83% come by knockout, 17% by submission. Some notes I have on Danilo: he has six wins, and five of those wins come in the first 60 seconds of the fight, and four of those wins come in the first 30 seconds. You know, this guy's getting you know, opponents out of there very early. Um, he only lost. He only went to the 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 second minute i'd say the second minute of, of a of a fight against a guy named yuri gorbenko who's 12 and 54 and is on an impressive 28 fight losing streak like that's impressive like it's not easy losing 28 fights in a row um there were only two fights i found out of this guy 
And I think he would have got like more re resistance from like a house of cards because some of these opponents, man, I mean, just the, the worst competition I think I've ever seen in my life. Uh, but what I what I did see was he has some solid knees. He's looking to finish you in, within that first minute, and he's and he's done that. He's done it five times, so I'll, I'll give him that. But geez, I know absolutely nothing about this guy other than he's he's fought the worst competition I've ever seen. I'm watching these fights, thinking like, where the hell do they do they find some of these guys? Like these guys can't be real. These guys can't be real. I mean, some of these dudes, man. And then I, I was watching this one fight, and he beat this dude up who who shouldn't have, have been in there. And then at the end of the fight, they they gave um, they gave Danilo a trophy, and then they gave the loser a trophy. Like they gave both guys a trophy. It's like what? Like a little trophy? Like something looks like like this? Like I I've never seen anything like it. So I mean, this guy, I don't know, but. Yeah, uh, this can be his toughest test, uh, to say the least. Um, so, yeah, this is a heavyweight fight. Obviously, anything can happen, but there's no way I can pick uh, Danilo. Um, just, just just, no way I can do it. He's fought the worst competition imaginable, and this is going to be just... <laughs> just I mean, if you guys have seen some of his opponents, I mean, this is going to be his toughest test by, by a mile. Uh, we've not seen his ground game tested. We've not seen his cardio tested either. I think it would be wise for Schillenfelder to try to get this fight down to the mat pretty early. And if he does that, if he extends it past, you know, 60 seconds, he should be able to break this guy. And I think it won't take more than uh, than a couple minutes. So I'm going to take Sean Felder to win this fight. I'm going to take him to win this fight by late first round TKO. There you guys have it. Thank you for watching. Should be uh, should be a fun card. Should be an interesting card. If you guys do want more content, check out DFSbythenumbers.com. There you'll have my fighter notes for Dana White's Contender Series Week Number Seven. Uh, my best bet article where I break down the fights, get my my best bet, the confidence ratings for each and every fighter, and then also be on the lookout for the betting um, breakdown video as well. So check that out, DFSbythenumbers.com. Also be on the lookout for UFC Paris content, which is coming out as well. And one last time, do you want to shout out the sponsor of the video that is Price Picks. Use that code DFSBTN and get fifty dollars instantly when you play your first five dollar lineup. Best of luck. Everybody, Contender Series week number seven. We'll talk to you soon. See you.